Klingscheiber has been farming all his life. I grow wheat for export. And this time of year, once the wheat is planted, it's up to Mother Nature. We're a day closer to the good rain every day. And one of these days, we're going to get it. But it's been more than just a dry spell. The drought has destroyed crops nationwide. And then there's always the market to worry about. When the grain prices crash like they've been known to do, then we are in really big trouble. And that's when the subsidies help us out more. And that's what farm subsidies are for, to help farmers in tough times. Farm subsidies go to what are considered commodity crops like wheat, corn, soybeans, and sorghum. But the two news investigators found tens of thousands of dollars going to businesses who aren't growing commodity crops at all. Instead, they're growing the stuff that golf courses are made of, sod, and it's perfectly legal. We asked the USDA, how can a sod farm get a wheat subsidy? A spokesperson said the subsidies are based on what was historically planted. So maybe wheat was planted in, let's say, 1986, and by 1995, nothing was growing on the land. If you apply for it, you can still continue to get the subsidies for wheat. The USDA sent us this statement. A farmer is not obligated to grow the crop to receive a direct payment for that crop and may plant any crop with the exception of fruits and vegetables or may choose to plant no crop and still receive the payment. Also, the land must be considered agricultural and be at least 10 acres to get the subsidies. We poured over USDA documents gathered by the Environmental Working Group, a nonprofit research group. We found three area sod farms taking subsidies for land they are growing grass on. The record showed Tulsa Grass and Sod has received $22,000 from 1995 to 2010 in farm subsidies when they were growing sod. After several tries, they declined an interview. Then there's Gina Farms in Bixby. According to USDA data from 1996 to 2011, it's received $135,000. Their subsidies are for wheat and soybeans, but the owner admits most of the land they're receiving subsidies for has grass growing on it. They, too, declined to talk on camera. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Easton Sod Farms in Bixby, the records indicate it's received $119,000 for six different crops from 2000 to 2011. But admit they've been growing grass on the land. They didn't want to talk to us either. We found most sod farms in our area don't take subsidies. But for the three that do, it totals about $275,000. Don received 75000 over the same time period. Our investigation found commodity farmers get most of the subsidy money, but the fact that people growing sod are even getting some of it concerns Don. In those situations, they shouldn't be entitled to them. Uh, if they're growing sod, that's big business. It's certainly not something Congressman Frank Lucas feels people should get subsidies for. While a lot of good folks enjoy their lawns, and a lot of folks spend a good bit of time out on those golf courses. I think probably in the view of most constituents, it's the flour that comes from the wheat, it's the livestock that are raised from the corn, it's all of these other things that would be their definition of what the commodity title should be. Congressman Lucas is the chair of the House Agriculture Committee and says criticism over the subsidy program will mean changes next year, but he still has a plan to help out farmers. Using insurance to try and maintain a revenue stream Plus, he also wants to offer price protection for farmers in case the market takes a turn. As long as the farmers still get subsidies to help them out, Don's happy with it. Now he's just waiting for the rain so he can do what he loves most, farming. We're providing a service and feeding the people. Marla Carter, 2 News works for you.